Coming to you from the heart of Midland, this is the April 2014 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, MPS Social Studies Curriculum Specialist and host of the show. Today we're exploring MPS and the arts. We'll start off by learning about one of our most impressive college and career ready programs, the IB Art Program. I guarantee you'll be impressed by the thought processes and the artwork created by our students and their teachers. After the April Counselor's Corner, we'll learn about Project Art Museum, or PAM as we call it, which is a great opportunity for all of our fifth graders to learn about the arts with our partners at the Midland Center for the Arts. Remember that all of our shows are available on our MPS website through our YouTube site. Just go to www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube link at the top of the page. You can also catch us on TV, on Charter Cable Channel 190, and on UVerse Channel 99. To start off, we're doing something a little different. Recently, a group of our International Baccalaureate, or IB, art students and their teachers presented to a group of parents about the IB art program. So let's check out what they have to say about this wonderful college and career ready program. Hello, my name is Scott Cockrum, the Social Studies Curriculum Specialist, and I have the honor and privilege of working with our art students and teachers here at the Midland Public Schools. And we're going to talk about the International Baccalaureate Art Program, our IB Art Program, which focuses on 11th and 12th graders uh, at our high schools, at both Midland High School and Dow High School. And it's really the culminating experience for our students uh, when it comes to art. And we talk all the time in education about helping our students be college and career ready. And I can't think of a program that we have in MPS that's more college and career ready focused than our art program, and specifically IB Art. Uh, last year, for example, our uh, graduating students earned over $850,000 worth of college scholarships, so almost a million dollars worth of scholarships uh, directly tied to their expertise and talent and products when it came to art. And uh, students leave our programs ready for uh, jobs in the, f in the field, and they leave our programs ready to be very, very competitive at, at the best art schools around the country. So we're very, very proud of that. And of course, this is the culmination of our K-12 art program. And as you probably are aware, uh, K-5 and elementary school students are exposed to art every week, once or twice a week. Uh, starting in middle school, they have the choice to take more art experiences. Uh, in, in eighth grade, they have the chance to take a full year art class for the first time. And then, of course, when students get to high school, uh, there are quite a few different classes and experiences that are available to them. So uh, without talking much more about that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to two wonderful teachers uh, from Dow High School, Mrs. Carol Lewin, and from Midland High School, Dr. Mark Francisco. So as you know, the IB program was bought, brought to Midland Public Schools as initiated by the Dow Chemical Company because they recognized that their families would benefit by an internationally certified program. IB Visual Art is part of Group 6, the arts of the IB program. Contributing to being awarded the IB Charter, the International Charter Committee recognized that our students were producing artwork that was of a sup superior caliber throughout our current program. A brief history of the IB uh, Visual Art program is that after each school was interviewed and a, ch and a charter was awarded MPS, um, we started the IB program um, following instructor training, and it started specifically in the year uh, 2K8 at Herbert Henry Dow High School. Later, um, Midland High followed, and we started with their, their four options. Um, what does the IB Visual Art Program do for our students? It raises the rigor bar to an international standard and gives international credibility to an already strong art program. It raises student artists to an expressive level with their artwork. It places value in the process of producing artwork over the final product. It puts a great deal of emphasis on the symbiotic relationships between research, trial, making, understanding, recycling their artwork and themes. It gives the high school studio artist and designer purpose in their artwork. And the byproduct of this program beyond the value of the development of the high school studio artist is evidenced in the hundreds and thousands of scholarships offered to our graduating seniors every year, as well as our art students are annually accepted to prestigious and, uh, art schools and design schools and universities nationally and internationally. Um, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Mr. Cochran so that we can bring Hunter back in so that he can get back down to the snow sculpture. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mrs. Lewin. 
You know, as you look at the artwork uh, that the students have displayed here, and of course this is just a sampling, uh, the first time I saw this, and I imagine you may think the same thing, I thought, well, obviously the students are talented, and I just kind of pictured them sitting down and developing their artwork and, and painting or drawing or sculpting or uh, throwing up, up, up some pottery on the wheel and just sort of making something creative happen. That creative magic would just sort of take over, right? That does happen. However, uh, there's a whole lot of backstory. There's a whole uh, series of things that happen before that uh, inspiration is carried out uh, that you see in front of you here. And that's what we're going to learn about a little bit today. So, Hunter, if you wouldn't mind starting us off with that. Thank you. Awesome. All right. This is not the class I had ever expected to impact my life as much as it has. I expected to show up, research a little bit, and get as many projects done as possible. IB art is so much more than that. When I first got my black book at the end of sophomore year, I could never have anticipated what it would have become. I've taken this book with me all over the country. Um, my parents let me go at the end of sophomore year, beginning of junior year, into out west, into Arizona, California, and all those regions. And I got to bring this black book with me. And I got to research and reflect into all these different cu cultures. Um, being an artist, um, oftentimes you need to reflect on what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, with my work, I relate all back to my faith because that is something that makes me who I am to this day. Um, so with all of my work, um, for the most part, all that relates back to my faith and how um, I can show it in new um, investigative ways rather than stick with the old traditional ways. So rather than do, say, a traditional picture of the crucifixion, um, I instead went with an abstract expressionist route, um, the black with the red over here, um, researching artists such as Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner, to, which are traditionally more of an atheistic, agnostic, uh, spiritualistic kind of view. Um, using these methods in order to show my own faith and how I can show it using new ways is something which I believe is critically important to this new age. Um, with using strong imaging and uh, reflective colors to bring out more of what, um, more of the colors and rather than the dank old stuff that typically is found in museums when it comes to religion, um, I chose to instead go with brighter colors and to show that yes, there's happiness and yes, there's joy with all of it. Um, having this black, uh, having the black book and having the research and the reflection, being able to write down this is exactly what I'm feeling at this particular time. It's really absolutely fantastic as an art student because I don't need to think about, oh man, what did I feel at this exact time? I can look back into my book and find out this is exactly what I'm feeling. Here's how I can channel it into this artwork. I have received a full ride scholarship to Grand Canyon University for art related programs um, involving set design and other research. I would not have gotten that scholarship if it were not for this black book. Um, without the research, without the reflection, without any of the journaling, any of the sketching, I would not have received it. Um, being able to back up what we do is so important. None of the other classes, none of the other art classes in school will let you or make you research and reflect on it. And that's what gets the scholarships. Thank you. That's what I have. Thank you, Hunter. And I should have mentioned uh, Hunter is at Midland High School, uh, yeah. right? And uh, a senior there, so nice job. Uh, next, from Dow High School, we have an 11th grader, uh, Ms. Caitlin Blackmore. Come back here. Okay. So when I first came into the class and we were given the task of doing research into other cultures, I thought maybe looking at the artists that you found there or the techniques they used, but I also um, found that researching the government and economics and the history of those cultures can play a really important role in how you choose to create your artwork and what influences you. So this is some research that I did into Australia towards the beginning of the summer, and it's really stuff that impacted me. And that's my piece over there, the lizard with all the dots. And as you can see, one of the things that um, has really influenced me is this idea of patterns and that it's something that you can find across all cultures. So when I focus on one culture, I look at the patterns that they find important and the symbolism behind it. 
So in the process of creating an, an investigative page in my sketchbook, I like to look at the materials that they use and the color schemes and that kind of thing because pigments and paints and the geography and what one culture finds important can greatly affect um, the colors and stuff that you would use in your piece. So like for this piece, I found that the Aborigines use more um, basic like earth tone colors and so that's what influenced um, my work and also, with like the idea of shapes and stuff, how normally we would think of it as just being a circle or a lizard. For other kinds of cultures, especially in Australia, each of those shapes and each dot plays an important role in telling a story about what their lives are, and so that's another thing that I took to influence from that. Working on um, Aborigines dot paintings, I continued on to uh, the idea of flowers and our nature and our environments. And so these are some photos that I took outside of my house that it shows that you can find something, you can do some research and it doesn't even have to be a cultural way. It can be something that you find here in Midland even. And so um, the process is taking something that you find important to you and connecting it back with the research that you've done. So where I think these flowers are beautiful and that they play an important role in my life, I've been able to connect them back and do it in a different style that you wouldn't traditionally see. So this is an example of um, a page that I did for a painting uh, in the Aborigines dot form and this is kind of what um, continues on from the research is doing your sketches and deciding the color schemes and practicing exactly what it is that you want it to look like and so here I have I tried a bunch of different colors before I finally picked the ones that I liked and so that's also really important and overall I've noticed that especially in this class, a lot of the stuff that I've learned has connected back to other classes that I'm taking, like psychology and world history. So it's showing me that there's another world out there that I don't, I'm not able to experience because of where we live, but you can experience it through research and through other classes and how everything connects back together. We're gonna go on to, uh, back across town to Midland High School and have Callie Winslow talk with us a little bit. So Callie? Art has taught me that art is about more than just the finished product. It's also about the process and, uh, processes and ideals that go into creating something. <clears throat> and yet this idea of coming up with an idea, researching it, yeah. and then exploring it yourself is important in any field. Because when I tell people that I'm in IV art, they assume that I'm going into an art-related <laughs> field. But I'm actually going into neuroscience. But this class is the ideas that we learn in here are applicable in any field. And I get my inspiration from a lot of different places. And the first ones that I looked at were what happens when two cultures come together to form something new. And so I researched an artist named Ismail Galji, and he was born in Pakistan and moved to the United States to study at Harvard. And while he was there, he began discovering his passion for painting. And so he created this new style that was a combination of American action painting and Islamic calligraphy. And he combined these two cultures seamlessly to create this beautiful piece that wouldn't have otherwise been there if both of the cultures hadn't been there. And so I did a piece inspired by this. <coughs> I went to an Islamic culture event because one of my friends is from Pakistan and she invited me to this. And while I was there, it was just amazing to see their culture and what kind of an impact it had. And so while I was there, she actually translated my name into Arabic and I used that and abstracted the characters to make this new piece that was putting me at the center of this juxtaposition of cultures. And it kind of represented when I went to that event and how enlightening it was that I was at the bridge of these two cultures and seeing what new things can come when you combine things that you wouldn't necessarily think of doing. I also look at um, societal influences and how those ideas affect how people behave. This artist that I researched, his name is David Trumbull, and he did a series of animated princesses that were based on real female historical figures to show that these diverse, eclectic women can't be boiled down to just one archetype that's all sparkly with a homogenized smile. And so this idea that the media perpetuates of there's only one 
way that you can be beautiful, I didn't agree with it. And I started doing research into Marion Bolognese, and she did all kinds of really different faces from watercolor. And it was amazing to me that they could all look so diverse and unique when there's just the features, there's nothing else. And that led into a series that I did of people that I knew, all in watercolor. And I put them next to each other, as you can see over here, to show how you can compare them and look at the differences and how the things that make them unique are actually what make them beautiful more than what are similar between them. And so this idea of coming up with an idea, researching it, and then applying it to your own life is important in any field. And it's the kind of creative processes that I think we need to be teaching. And uh, some of the research that I did here actually helped me win a full ride scholarship to Central for four years from an essay competition that I did. And that's why I feel this class has prepared me more than anything else for college and life beyond. Thank you, Callie. That's great. And I love the, <clears throat> the look at what truly makes people beautiful. All right, we're going to go ahead and have uh, Dr. Mark Francisco present for a student who couldn't make it today, uh, Kylie Workentine. Kylie's original prompt in her research was to research her name. She found out that her name means boomerang. <laughs> so from that, she then bridged into uh, researching the wood of boomerang, which is birch. So she did a painting of birch trees. And in her journey, she uh, started looking into um, the structure of that, the structure of trees, the, the, the mathematical underlying structure of things in general. And so then that kind of led her into uh, doing some research into M.C. Escher perspective. Um, also in Australia, there's a lot of symbolic color use. And so she researched the symbology of color. You can see in her sketchbook here uh, where she's doing a lot of research into colors and what they mean in various cultures. And uh, that resulted in this painting here with mathematical M.C. Escher, cultural color symbology, all incorporated in that one piece. Very high level thinking piece that uh, is very unusual for high school. Actually, it's not unusual anymore. It used to be unusual for high school. We're seeing uh, a tremendous amount of high level thinking going on. Uh, again, she says that she is probably not going to be an art major. She's probably going to be an engineer, uh, but she's also in, involved in a dual enrollment class uh, with Kendall College of Art and Design and is thinking about that. So she's a junior, and uh, we'll see what happens next year. She may be like Callie telling us about a, a full ride scholarship, a student like that that somebody would be very proud of, and I think Midland would be very proud of. It's nice to see. I could talk forever because I'm paid to do that, but <laughs> it's probably time for me to get off the stage and allow a real student to come and talk and I'll get out of the way here. Thank you, Dr. Francisco. Welcome, thanks. And another great example of, of all the work that goes into deciding what is going to be in the artwork. A uh, great example of that. So next we have Alexis Berenger from uh, Dow High School. You're going to talk to us about preparing for a career in art, yes? Yep. All right, well, when I was a little girl, I had very high hopes of what I would become someday. I, um, I had really big dreams of becoming an astronaut, which would not work out because I get motion sick very easily. But um, I also, <laughs> one of my other dreams was becoming a firefighter, but one of them was also an artist. And uh, when I got a little bit older, I wanted to be a doctor and then a vet, but an artist was still on the list. But I was afraid of becoming the starving artist, as you always hear as a you know, stereotype for artists. And so I never decided to go into that for an art career. And when I entered high school, I decided I was going to be a psychologist because I also, my other sort of passion is psychology and learning about mental health. And so I got into AP psychology at school and I was studying it this year. And five weeks into the school year, I just came to a realization that that's just not who I am. I'm an artist and that's what I wanted to do. And so five weeks into the school year this year, I approached Mrs. Lewin in the art room and I showed her some of my work and out of kind of a leap of faith she accepted me into the class because the only background class I had was intermediate art and then middle school classes of art classes. So I was accepted strictly off of um, Mrs. Lewin over here so thank you for accepting me. And um, 
So when I entered the class, I, it was not at all what I expected. All I knew was that it was kind of based on your own curriculum. You got to do whatever you needed to do. And um, I entered the class with a very vague idea of what it was. And I entered the class and I just, I started thriving. I really did. And um, this is my sketchbook here. It, I painted the cover saying, forget the world and what it wants me to be. Because I originally planned on becoming something that I really wasn't because of conformities that I heard about in the world and, you know, becoming the starving artist. And I was afraid I wouldn't be able to support myself but at this point I really I really don't care even if I do become a starving artist because I'll be doing what I love I could live out of my car making art and I'd be happy <laughs> but um, <laughs> so um, but Mrs. Lewin even I had a meeting with her a few weeks after I came into the class and we sat down and talked about college ideas and even from one meeting I learned from her that there's so many things that you can do in art that there's you really don't have to become a starving artist there's so many places you can go with it and so um, with that, I started my research. And as you can see, my book is a little overflowing here. I had to actually Velcro it because I use, I use scrapbook pages to actually cover the front of my sketchbook. And so I started my research with an artist named Alyssa Monks. And she does oil paintings. I don't know how well you can see that. But she does oil paintings of people in water behind stained glass and stuff like that. And my, um, we're supposed to choose a theme. And my theme I chose was age because in this class alone, I've really learned who I am and what I want to be and everything. And um, art has been there my entire life. And when I was younger, when I was only six years old, my mother was diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. And soon after, my parents were divorced. So I kind of grew up on a little on the fast side. So that's one of the reasons I chose age. And the reason I liked Alyssa Monk's work is that she portrayed many different like facial expressions and ages just within her oil paintings and so I took from that a um, series that I did a photography it's behind Mrs. Lewin over here my two best friends um, modeled for me so I have pretty great best friends but I took some of her ideas and I used um, we actually had them in my shower fully clothed don't mind don't worry about that she was, they were fully clothed they had the water on we let the water steam for a little while get the um, the window all fogged up and we had an actual I had a big picture on my wall and I actually took the glass out of it so I could use the glass for steaming and um, my senior pictures also I had paint splattered all over me and so I decided to combine those two ideas and we splattered paint all over my friend Kat over there and um, we combined the two ideas and it turned out into be, to be one of my favorite pieces over there so um, that's one of the things that I've done so far and the other one up there is entangling is what it's called it started out as a habit for me because I have this book that I got for, I believe, Christmas one time. And um, it's basically a meditational art. And what it is is you just, it's just little doodles, really. And um, these were some of the examples of the designs. And so I started doing my own. I have little ones all over my school papers and stuff like that. And this one just kind of came out of nowhere. I just created that. And it became a really um, big, influential thing that I do in art class now. I have several photos that I did where um, I took photos and then I actually did tangling over them. So they, they're very different compared to anything else I've ever done. But um, the overall idea is this class has really showed me what I want to do and who I want to become and everything in that um, all the places I can go. So now I have, I've applied to the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. And Mrs. Lewin says I'm looking at a, probably a pretty big scholarship. So hopefully that will work out. And actually later today I'll be working on my portfolio to turn in. So um, yeah, so that's it's really helped me figure out who I am and where I want to be. And really without Mrs. Lewin and this class, I would be going down a path that's not who I am. So. <laughs> As Mark comes up, I want to point out one other thing. If you like the artwork that you see here today, uh, this April, uh, after spring break, we'll have the uh, IB Art Show. It will be uh, over at the A.B. Dow Home and Studio, and Craig McDonald and the folks there are wonderful partners that we work with and have hosted the show before, and we're really looking forward to it. But you'll have a chance to see uh, some of this artwork and, and, and much, much more. Uh, lots of different media. It's really an amazing experience, and I highly encourage everyone to come out. Um, I do want to read a letter from, um, actually it's Callie's sister, who was an IB student a couple of years ago and is now in China uh, with CMU. She, well let me just read. From Jessica Winslow, class of 2011. Looking back now as a sophomore in college, IB art was one of the best courses I took at Midland High in terms of college prep. The critical thinking skills and creative ability it fostered in me have proved to be invaluable. It helped me practice the self-discipline and responsibility that are essential to succeed in college. The research and the collaborative brainstorming that occurred at different points reflects what it means to be an academic. You have to be able to explain and document your process, present your creative ideas to people for feedback and criticism, provide constructive feedback in return, 
bounce ideas off your peers, consider different viewpoints on your ideas, respond to ongoing conversations in the discipline by drawing on the work of others, accurately acknowledge your research sources, and make connections between widely varying ideas to produce a central theme. She's got it. <laughs> IB Art, <coughs> excuse me here, helped me win a full ride scholarship to the honors program at Central Michigan University. Because of my IB experience researching and learning, I had a deeper understanding of art than I had of any other discipline. I was able to draw on this understanding to answer a scholarship essay prompt that asked about paradigm shifts within disciplines. In addition, the core values of IB very much align with the core values of CMU honors program. These values learned through IB are not only uh, helping me get admitted to Central and the honors program, it helped me to succeed once I got there as well. I think that very eloquently states it. When the students show up in May, we start IB, and I tell them, you have the three R's. You have research, reflection, and art. And that encapsulates uh, what used to be from Europe. I, another job I have is as an IB examiner in visual art. And we receive two thick volumes of how to assess. Well, we Americans like to break it down and make it simple. And the three R's are really it. And these kids get that, because once they follow the research stream to support their artwork, uh, and then reflect on it, that's a skill that you use in any career field, any profession. Uh, and I think they are actually uh, nailing it, don't you think? I think the scholarships show that. I think the work shows that. Wasn't that great? Each and every one of those students is sure to go far. And we appreciate everything that their art teachers have done for them. Be sure to check out the IB Art Show this April 24th through the 27th at the A.B. Dow Home and Studio. And the Home and Studio is another one of our wonderful community partners. Now up next on MPS Today, we'll hear from our counselors for the April edition of the Counselor's Corner, and then it'll be on to Project Art Museum. So stick around for more MPS Today, right after this. There's no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away, but making sure your child is in the right seat is just one of the steps down the road to safer travels. I don't know how it works. Find the right seat for your little one's age and size. We saw what you told us. There's no better way to get home safely. Know for sure that your child is in the right seat. Get all the facts at safercar.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome to the April edition of Counselor's Corner. I am Jill English, counselor at Dow High School, and this is Craig Hawkins, counselor at Midland High School, and we're here to just provide you with some information happening in the month of April. So just want to remind you that the end of the marking period is coming up on April 11th, and remember that this will be halfway through the second semester, so this will be a good indication of how your student is currently doing, and if you have questions or concerns about their progress, certainly contact the Counseling Center or contact your child's teacher so that we can make sure that they finish out the year on a strong note. Um, in April sometime uh, at both high schools, we will be meeting with the 10th graders to give back the plan test that they took in March. And remember that the plan test was made up of two parts. It was a practice ACT as well as a career interest inventory that they took. So when we give them the results, we will be going over the ACT part of it, the practice ACT part of it, to give them an idea of how they might score when they actually take the ACT test during their junior year. But then we will also be tying in their career results with a program that we use called Michigan CAP. So all students have an account in Michigan CAP. We will be having them log in. Some of them may be doing a career interest inventory on Michigan CAP, or they may be doing more of a career search to get more details on a career that they think they're interested in. So we will tie together their results from the plan test, as well as the searches that they're doing online to help them get some more information to help them plan for their future. Another important program that we'll do deals with the 11th graders, where we will pull them into the computer lab and we'll explain to them uh, how to submit college applications. Also, we'll take them through a program called Parchment, which is how students will request to have their transcripts sent to the individual colleges that they want to apply to. 
So we ask students to apply to the colleges first, then send their transcripts through parchment, and that's all done electronically. We also do a college search with the students in 11th grade to help them identify colleges that they may have an interest in, talk about the different characteristics of colleges that they need to look for, uh, talk about the majors that colleges offer, the atmosphere, the environment, uh, cost. We try to cover as many of those components as we can so that they make a good informed decision of what is the best college for them to apply to and then how do they go about doing that whole process. So that's something that we want every 11th grader to have in their pocket when they're going out there and looking to see what am I going to do when I get out of high school? Am I going to go to a community college, a four-year college? Am I going to go into a training program? What am I going to really do when I get out of high school? So that's what we'll go over with each one of those junior students. Another thing is it's important to know that, that AP Advanced Placement and International Baccalaureate courses and tests will be given in the month of May. So in April, it's good to have an idea that your student will be doing those tests if they signed up for them and if they choose to take those Advanced Placement and International Baccalaureate tests. That's it for the month of April. Please join us again when we cover more important topics for the month of May. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome back to MPS Today. As promised, we're here at the Midland Center for the Arts to learn about the Project Art Museum. Here to explain are the Midland Center for the Arts Manager of Educational Programming, Debbie Anderson, and dance instructor, Sandra Black. Uh, Debbie and Sandra, welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. You bet. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do here at the Center for the Arts. Well, at the center we have a lot of, of different things that go on, so my, my job is to make sure that uh, we bring students in for museum visits, we bring um, groups, student groups in for shows, um, provide students in the area opportunities to come and explore the arts, sciences, humanities at the center and be able to take something home and develop sort of lifelong passions. Sure. And so your job is educational programming is yep. kind of overseeing all those activities. Yep. And you have summertime activities as well, right? We do. We have summer camps. We have, during the year, we have Family Discovery Day series where families can come and explore and discover the arts and sciences together. So we have lots of opportunities for people to come yeah. and do things. And if people want to learn more about those, they should go to your website? Yep, mcfta.org and, and explore it. It's a brand new website and it's really uh, yeah. easy to find. Right. It is a nice website. And I tell you what, as a, as a representative of the school district, I, we really do appreciate the partnership we have with the Center for the Arts and all that you do for our students. So thank you very much. Thanks for stopping up. Yeah, of course. Now, uh, Sandra, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background in dance and your connection to the Center for the Arts here. Um, I was born and raised in Midland, and um, I went away to school, got a dance degree, went to Western Michigan, and then finished my dance degree at Wayne State University. Uh, I was a dancer there. I actually got my degree in education, uh, and my accent is children's dance, so love teaching children. I came back after I graduated and opened the studio. My mother and I had the studio together, and she um, retired in 2002, and then so I took it over, and um, I come back to the center all the time. I use the center to do my spring performances, and then got involved with Project Art Museum quite a few years ago. Um, so. I'm involved with it every year. In fact, Debbie and I were just talking just the other day to set the dates for, for next year. So sure. I, I totally enjoy teaching children. That's great. And so your studio is the Dean Black School? Right. Studio? My school is Dean Black School of okay. Performing Arts. Um, I've been teaching for over 30 years in the area and actually all over the Detroit area as well for 15. Yeah. And if people want to get a hold of you at the studio, what's the... Or the they can call me um, at the studio or we have a website as well, www.deanblack.com. And um, our summer schedule should be open soon. So. Okay. Come and see our show, too, in May, here right at the center. Yeah, great. It's a great show. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Project Art Museum. What exactly happens? Well, when the students come in, they come in for a half day. Uh, they do three different rotations throughout that half day. One is with Sandy, and she teaches them a, an engaging dance experience, and I'll let her talk a little bit about that. And then we take them up to the museum, the Albany Dow Museum of Science and Art, and we take them on a mini tour through an exhibit. Um, that we've chosen and their vocabulary words that they learn along the way that are art-based 
um, but get them to associate with the picture or, or the piece of artwork in front of them. And then they get turned loose to do a little exploration and, and kind of making some decisions of their own, what they like, what they don't like, and, and how to become a museum goer, basically. Yeah. And then they go down to our art studios, and they look, our faculty are down there demonstrating their craft, their artwork, um, and also t answering a little bit about what it's like to be a working artist, what it, what it takes to have a career in art. Um, they get to see jewelry, drawing, painting, and pottery or ceramics. So they get a lot, he a lot crammed into a very short time frame, but it keeps them very busy and engaging in the arts. And because they're just here for a couple hours, right? Yep. So it's a half day, yep. basically. Yep. Half day and experience. all schools in the area. Um, it's all Midland Public School fifth graders come through each year, um, and some of the parochial schools as well. Mm -hmm. So every fifth grader gets a chance to experience that. Yeah. I'm sure it's really nice because they're just starting to think about what classes they're going to be signing up for in the sixth grade. Yes. I'm sure there's students that are introduced to something they thought they would be interested in or surprised that they are. Yeah, and, and they're surprised at, at how attainable the artwork is. Even though our, our artists are very professional, mm -hmm. very skilled, but they're surprised at how, how simplified the, they can make it appear, I guess. <laughs> although, yeah. although it takes time to develop that skill, it, it feels really attainable. So what would you say is, was the goal of the program when it first started? Was it simply to expose kids to things or to? I think it was, it's been happening for a very long time. But the, the purpose was to bring them to the, bring them to the Center for the Arts, have them have an, an out of school experience um, relating to the arts and seeing it in just a different light. The, the approach we take now with it, which it's evolved over time, is that we want them to come, we want them to experience the arts, and we want them to become museum goers, or goers appreciators of the art. We know not everyone is going to become a great artist, but if they can appreciate it or they sure. can experience it in some way and connect a little deeper on it, they'll have a, sort of a better going forward experience in, in the arts. So kind of planting those seeds yeah. for the students. Yeah. Yeah. And Sandra, talk with us about the, the dance piece of it. What is that like? Um, I try to engage the students. Sometimes I coordinate um, what they're going to see in the galleries or in the, the art rooms with the dancing. And I have in the past, like when we did the car exhibit, um, I taught them a, a little combination to Route 66. And we kind of interspersed our movement between the car movement, old cars, new cars, et cetera. When we did the King Tut, prefer, or the King Tut exhibit, I had them dance to dance like an Egyptian. Yeah. Um, so kind of, you know, kind of tongue in cheek type, type of thing. But the kids sometimes are apprehensive when they come in there. So I really want to make it fun for them and fun in the movement. So um, I, I try to tie it in, but loosely based. Yeah. And I also teach them the basics of dance experience time, space, and energy, and we kind of explore that as well. So tell us more about that, time, space, and energy. What's that about? Well, time, space, and energy are the three elements of dance. Um, time meaning how fast you move, uh, space, the space that you engage the movement in, and the energy is the power that you put into the movement. So I actually do a little bit of an improv with them as well. So it's kind of a basic creative movement um, type of experience. But I have a jazz dance combination, so it makes it fun for everybody to do yeah. as well. So it's not real deep, but actually it's kind of like teaching them something that they need to know without really knowing. You know what I mean? So <laughs> giving them something that they really need to know for a basic dance experience. And they have a riot with it. Today they really had a lot of fun. Yeah, I was very pleased that. with them. Yeah, a lot of energy in the room. And, oh yeah, and yeah, and I, I try to contain that a little bit. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's always a challenge, right? Right, no, it's a challenge, but a good challenge. I'm yeah, always sure. up for it. Now, have either of you seen opportunities in the, or experiences in the past where students have come through and, and then wanted to come back to take a class here at the center or oh, more sure. involved in dance? Definitely, and, definitely. And I have students of my own as well that come through and are very excited that they're gonna you know, sort of show off their skills yeah. a little bit to the other kids. But you yeah, I've gotten surprised. kids that have called afterwards and say they want to try try taking dance, as sure. well as I'm sure you have had that experience yeah. as well. When we, when we go and pick them up out of the studios with the artists, they always ask about, you know, when are your summer camps coming out? Yeah. Can we do ceramics? Can we do clay? That tends to be their biggest excitement because that's the last station they end with is the ceramics. Right. But, so they always want to know when our classes are coming up and how much they are and are scholarships available and, and they are <laughs> and they're coming up and all of that. So we do see a lot of excitement about that. And usually I do a little survey, who's been here before, um, what, what have you been here for and things like that too. So. Families that are interested in summer opportunities or other classes that are coming up, I'm sure they can go to the website, but is the summer schedule out yet? Would that be out soon? It'll be out the 10th of March. It'll be on our website, uh, as, and then it'll be coming into mailboxes, home from school in many of cases, and things like that. So yeah, it'll be available. And we have our summer camp kickoff on the 15th of March, which is free and open to the public. It has lots of 20 different vendors that'll have area programs for the summer. So. Okay, great. So we have plenty of opportunity for people to yeah. see it ahead of time. Uh, well, tell us, I'm sure you've had experiences that were kind of interesting or funny that happened during 
Project Art Museum. We were talking about some of that earlier. Yeah, I had um, some boys that came through just yesterday, or last week, and um, they came walking in the room saying, oh, this is going to be easy, this is going to be really easy. And some of the girls are kind of looking at them funny, but okay. So by the end of the class, they walked out, wow, this was harder than football practice. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think they did find that I get kids that are a little apprehensive when they come in, but by the time they leave, um, they're smiling and moving around and excited about the movement. So I try to make that engaging with them as well. That they, they've had, you know, they've scratched the surface just barely as far as the dance goes, but I want to give them a good experience so that they'll come back again. Yeah. In, in, you know, whatever realm that is whether coming to see a show or even taking classes or even like Debbie said, engaging in, in that way, taking a ceramics class or, or a drawing class or whatever. So some sort of arts. I really, really want the kids to be able to support the arts in, in our community as well as other communities later. Sure. And you know, as a parents later on, that take their own children as well. So you know, plant the seed that way. Yeah, and the kids seem to have a great time. I've heard from my staff who spend a lot of time up in the museum with them as, as their group rotates through that once we turn them loose after giving them this, the mini formal tour with, with vocabulary, they start to go and pick out, we tell them to pick out their favorite pieces. And most time, this time in this rotation, it tends to be these three abstract pieces. They're very square, they're very bright colors, and they were sitting down on the floor and just discussing it amongst themselves. And you would not expect fifth graders to have adult conversations about how they felt about a particular painting, but they were, which I thought was really impressive because they're really taking the time to slow down and think about it. And I don't think they realize they're learning in the process. Right. I think they really are just engaging with it and, and really enjoying the fact that they have a choice to pick the pieces that they want to explore more with each other. So. Well, it just goes to show an artistic expression, whether it be through dance or painting or pottery or any of the other many media that are out there. It's inside of everybody in one way or another, isn't it? Right, yeah. You know, last month on the show, we were talking with uh, some supporters of, uh, of the athletics programs about the Boosters Bash. And, uh, all the different sports programs, what they do for our students, and uh, I'm really struck by the idea that we have students that are very into sports, we have students that are very into music, we have students that are very into the arts, and many times it's the same students that are interested in multiple areas, and it's wonderful that a uh, community our size, we have so many different opportunities mm -hmm. to take that. Well, I tell you what, it's, it's wonderful our students get a chance to experience Project Art Museum in the fifth grade, and we really appreciate it, so thanks for all the work that you do. Thank you. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Yeah. But, well, that's our show for today. Uh, remember, you can view the show on our YouTube site. Just go to the school website, www.midlandps.org, and click on the YouTube button in the top right-hand corner. And if you click on the subscribe button at the YouTube site, you'll get updates whenever we have a new show. You can also check us out on TV on Charter Cable Channel 190 and UVerse Channel 99. But remember, all the shows are on the YouTube site, and we noticed last week we were almost to 10,000 views on the website. So. If you go, you're in good company on the YouTube site for sure. So have a great day, and we'll see you next time on MPS Today.